Welcome to this podcast on the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019. The Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019 was passed by the Parliament of India on 11th December 2019. It purportedly amended the Citizenship Act 1955 by providing a pathway to Indian citizenship for persecuted religious minorities from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan who are Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis or Christians and arrived in India before the end of December 2014. The law does not grant such eligibility to Muslims from those countries, all of which are Muslim majority countries. That was the first time that religion had been overtly used as a criteria for citizenship under Indian law and attracted global criticism. The Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, which leads the Indian government, had promised in previous election manifestos to offer Indian citizenship to members of persecuted religious minorities who had migrated from neighboring countries. Under the 2019 amendment, migrants who had entered India by 31st December 2014 and had suffered religious persecution or fear of religious persecution in their country of origin were made eligible for citizenship. The amendment also relaxed the residence requirement for naturalization of these migrants from 12 years to 6. According to intelligence bureau records there will be just over 30000 immediate beneficiaries of the bill The amendment has been criticized as discriminating on the basis of religion particularly for excluding muslims The office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights or OHCHR called it fundamentally discriminatory adding that while india's goal of protecting persecuted groups is welcome this should be accomplished through a non-discriminatory robust national asylum system critics express concerns that the bill would be used along with the national register of citizens nrc to render many muslim citizens stateless as they may be unable to meet stringent birth or identity proof requirements Competent commentators also question the exclusion of persecuted religious minorities from other religions such as Tibet, Sri Lanka and Myanmar. The Indian government said that since Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh have Islam as their state religion, it is therefore unlikely that Muslims would face religious persecution there. However, certain Muslim groups such as hazaras and ahmadis have historically faced persecution in these countries the passage of the legislation caused large scale protests in india assam and other northeast states witnessed violent demonstrations against the bill over fears that granting indian citizenship to refugees and immigrants will cause a loss of their political rights culture and land rights and motivate further migration from Bangladesh. In other parts of India, protesters said that the bill discriminated against Muslims and demanded that Indian citizenship be granted to Muslim refugees and immigrants as well. Major protests against the act were held at some universities in India. Students at Aligarh Muslim University and Jamia Millia Islamia alleged brutal suppression by the police. The protests have led to the deaths of several protesters, injuries to both protesters and police officers, damage to public and private property, the detention of hundreds of people, and suspensions of local internet mobile phone connectivity in certain areas. Some states announced that they would not implement the act. In response, the Union Home Ministry said the states lack the legal power to stop the implementation of the CAA. Let's take a look at the background. The citizenship law. The Indian constitution that was implemented in 1950 guaranteed citizenship to all of the country's residents 
at the commencement of the constitution and made no distinction on the basis of religion the indian government passed the citizenships act in 1955 that provided two means for foreigners to acquire indian citizenship people from undivided india were given a means of registration after 7 years of residency in india those from other countries were given a means of naturalization after 12 years of residency in india political developments in the 1980s particularly those related to the violent assam movement against all migrants from bangladesh triggered revisions to the citizenship act of 1955 the citizenship act was first amended in 1985 after the assam accord was signed wherein the indian government of prime minister rajiv gandhi agreed to identify foreign citizens remove them from the electoral rolls and expel them from the country the citizenship act was further amended in 1992 2003 2005 and 2015 in december 2003 the national democratic alliance government led by the hindu nationalist bharatiya janata party bjp passed the citizenship amendment act 2003 with far reaching revisions of the citizenship act it added the notion of illegal immigrants to the act making them ineligible to apply for citizenship by registration or naturalization and declaring their children also as illegal immigrants illegal immigrants were defined as citizens of other countries who entered india without valid travel documents or who remained in the country beyond the period permitted by their travel documents they can be deported or imprisoned the 2003 amendment also mandated the government of india to create and maintain a national register of citizens the bill was supported by the indian national congress as well as the left parties such as the communist party of india marxist CPIM During the parliamentary debate on the amendment the leader of opposition Manmohan Singh stated that refugees belonging to minority communities in Bangladesh and other countries had faced persecution and requested that the government's approach to granting them citizenship be made more liberal According to MK Venu the formulation of the 2003 amendment discussed by Advani and Singh was based on the idea that muslim groups in pakistan and afghanistan that had experienced persecution also needed to be treated with compassion immigrants and refugees a very large number of illegal immigrants the largest numbers of whom are from bangladesh live in india the task force on border management quoted the figure of 15 million illegal immigrants in 2001 in 2004 the united progressive alliance upa government stated in parliament that there were 12 million illegal bangladeshi migrants in india the reasons for the scale of migration includes a porous border historical migration patterns economic reasons and cultural and linguistic ties Many illegal migrants from Bangladesh had eventually received the right to vote. According to Niraja Jayal, this enfranchisement was widely described as an attempt to win elections using the votes of the illegal migrants from Bangladesh. Bangladeshi scholar Abul Barkat estimated that over 11 million Hindus have left Bangladesh for India between 1964 and 2013 at a rate of 2000 230,612 annually The reasons were religious persecution and discrimination especially at the hands of the post-independence military regimes An unknown number of Pakistani Hindu refugees also live in India An estimate 5,000 refugees arrive per year citing religious persecution and forced conversion 
India is not a signatory to either the 1951 UN Refugee Convention or the 1967 Protocol. It does not have a national policy on refugees. All refugees are classed as illegal migrants. While India has been willing to host refugees, its traditional position formulated by Jawaharlal Nehru is that such refuse, refugees must return to their home countries after the situation returns to normal. According to the US Committee of Refugees and My Immigrants, India hosts refugees in excess of 456,000 with about 200,000 from non-neighboring countries hosted by the UNHCR. According to Shuvra Sarkar, since the 1950s and particularly since the 1990s, the Indian governments under various political parties have studied and drafted laws for the naturalization of refugees and asylum seekers. These drafts have struggled with issues relating to a mass influx of refugees, urban planning, cost of basic services, the obligations to protect protected tribes, and the impact on pre-existing regional poverty levels within India. Next, in background, we take a look at the Bharatiya Janata Party activities. The detection, deletion and deportation of illegal migrants has been on the agenda of the BJP since 1996. In the 2016 assembly elections for the border state of Assam, the BJP leaders campaigned in the state promising voters that they would read Assam of the Bangladeshis. Sim simultaneously, they also promised to protect Hindus who had fled religious persecution in Bangladesh. According to commentators, in the context of an effort to identify and deport illegal immigrants, the proposal to grant citizenship took a new meaning. Illegal migrants could be granted citizenship if they were non-Muslim, on the grounds that they were refugees. Only Muslims would be deported. In its manifesto for the 2014 Indian general election, the BJP promised to provide a natural home for persecuted Hindu refugees. The year before the 2016 elections in Assam, the government legalized refugees belonging to religious minorities from Pakistan and Bangladesh, granting them long-term visas. Bangladeshi and Pakistani nationals belonging to minority communities were exempted from the requirements of the Passport Act 1920 and the Foreigners Act 1946. Specifically mentioned were Hindus, Sikhs, Christians, Jains, Parsis and Buddhists who had been compelled to seek shelter in India due to religious persecution or fear of religious persecution. Eligibility for the exemption was made contingent on a migrant having arrived in India by 31st December 2014. The BJP government introduced a bill to, am to amend the citizenship law in 2016, which would have made non-Muslim migrants from Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh eligible for Indian citizenship. The bill st stalled in Parliament following widespread political opposition and protests in Northeast India. Opponents of the bill in Assam and the Northeastern states of India stated that any migration from Bangladesh, irrespective of religion, would cause loss of political rights and culture of the indigenous people. According to Niraja Jayal, while the BJP had promised to grant citi Indian citizenship to all Hindu migrants from Bangladesh in its election campaigns during the 2010s, the draft amendment bill angered many in Assam, including its own political allies, because they, they view the amendment as a violation of the Assam Accord. The Assam Accord promised to identify and deport any like all illegal Bangladeshi migrants who entered the state after 1971, regardless of their religious identity. In 2018, as the draft of this amendment was being discussed, numerous Assamese organizations petitioned 
and agitated against it. They fear that the amendment will encourage more migration and diminish employment opportunities to the native residents of Assam. In parallel to the drafting of an amendment to the 1955 Citizenship Act, the BJP government completed an effort to update the National Register for Citizens or NRC in the state of Assam. The process for creating the NRC had been put in place by the Citizenship Rules Act enacted in 2003 and had been implemented in Assam under Supreme Court supervision as a result of a 2014 Supreme Court ruling. This was mandated under prior peace agreements in Northeast and the Assam Accord in particular. The updated register was made public in August 2019. Approximately 1.9 million residents were not on the list and were in danger of losing their citizenship. Many of those affected were Bengali Hindus who constitute a major voter base for the BJP. According to commentators, the BJP withdrew its support for the Asham NRC towards this end for this reason. On 19th November 2019, Home Minister Amit Shah declared in the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of the Indian Parliament, that the National Register of Citizens would be implemented throughout the country. Now let's take a look at the legislative history. The BJP government first introduced a bill to amend the citizenship law in 2016, which would have made non-Muslim migrants from Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh eligible for Indian citizenship. Although this bill was passed by the Lok Sabha or Lower House of Indian Parliament, it stalled in the Rajya Sabha following widespread political opposition and protests in Northeast India. The BJP reiterated its commitment to amend the Citizenship Act in its 2019 election campaign. It stated that religious minorities such as Hindus and Sikhs are persecuted in neighboring Muslim majority countries and promised to fast track a path to citizenship for non-Muslim refugees. After the elections, the BJP government drafted a bill that addressed the concerns of its northeastern states. It excluded Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura, Meghalaya, and Manipur, except for non-tribal cities exempted under pre-existing regulations. It also excluded tribal areas of Assam. The Indian government, while proposing an amendment, said that its bill aims to grant quicker access to citizenship to those who have fled religious persecution in neighboring countries and have taken refuge in India. The bill was introduced in Lok Sabha on 19th July 2016 as the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2016. It was referred to the Joint Parliamentary Committee on 12th August 2016. The committee submitted its report on 7th January 2019 to Parliament. The bill was taken into consideration and passed by Lok Sabha on 8th January 2019. It was pending for consideration and passing by the Rajya Sabha. Consequent to dissolution of 16th Lok Sabha, this bill has lapsed. After the formation of the 17th Lok Sabha, the Union Cabinet cleared the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 on 4th December 2019 for introduction in the Parliament. The bill was introduced in 17th Lok Sabha by the Minister of Home Affairs Amit Shah on 9th December 2019 and was passed on 10th December 2019, with 311 MPs voting in favour and 80 against the bill. The bill was passed by the Rajya Sabha on 11th December 2019, with 125 votes in favour and 105 votes against it. Those voted in favour included Janata Dal United, AIA DMK, Biju Janata Dal, TDP and YSR Congress Party. After receiving assent from the President of India on 12 December 2019, the bill assumed the status of an act. The act came into force on 10 January 2020. The implementation of the CAA began on 20 December 2019, when Union Minister Mansukh Mandavia gave citizenship certificates to seven refugees from Pakistan. 
Let's take a look at the analysis of the Act. The Act has amended the Citizenship Act 1955 to give eligibility for Indian citizenship to illegal migrants who are Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis, and Christians from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and Pakistan and who entered India on or before 31st December 2014. The Act does not mention Muslims. According to Intelligence Bureau records, the immediate beneficiaries of the Amendment Act will be 31,313 people, which includes 25,447 Hindus, 5,807 Sikhs, 55 Christians, 2 Buddhists, and 2 Parsis. Under the Act, one of the requirements for citizenship by naturalization is, the, is that the applicant must have lived in India during the last 12 months and for 11 of the previous 14 years. The bill relaxes this 11-year requirement to 5 years for persons belonging to the same 6 religions and 3 countries. The bill exempts the tribal areas of Asham, Meghalaya and Tripura from its applicability. It also exempts the areas regulated through the inner line permit which include Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram and Nagaland. The inclusion of Manipur in inner line permit was also announced on 9th December 2019. The bill includes a new provision for cancellation of the registration of overseas citizenship of India OCI if there are any violations of any law of India, whether they are petty misdemeanors or serious felonies. However, it also adds the opportunity for the OCI holder to be heard before the verdict. Selectively addressing religious persecution One important aspect of the analysis of this bill is the selectively addressing of the religious persecution. The exemption section in the amendment of the Act does not give attention to the refugees from all the neighboring countries. Of all the countries in the border, China, Bhutan, Nepal, Pakistan in the north or northwest and Bangladesh and Myanmar in the east and Sri Lanka in the south, this Act mentions Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan only. That is, the Muslim majority countries in the border only are being addressed by design in the Act. Another aspect of the analysis of this Act is the exclusion of persecuted Muslims. Muslims from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan are not offered eligibility for citizenship under the new Act. Critics have questioned the exclusion. The amendment limits itself to the Muslim majority neighbors of India and takes no cognizance of the persecuted Muslims of those countries. According to The Economist, if the Indian government was concerned about religious persecution, it should have included Ahmadiyyas, a Muslim sect who have been viciously hounded in Pakistan as heretics, and the Hazaras, another Muslim sect who have been murdered by the Taliban in Afghanistan. They should be treated as minorities. Indian Minister of Minority Affairs Mukhtar Abbas Nagvi defended the exclusion of the Ahmadiyyas by saying that India does not consider them as non-Muslims. A landmark 1970 judgment from the Kerala High Court deemed Ahmadiyyas to be Muslims by the Indian law. Nagvi added that India has provided refuge to different persecuted sects at different times and Ahmadiyyas will not be forgotten. Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh are Muslim majority countries that have modified their constitutions in recent decades to declare Islam their official state religion. Therefore, according to the Indian government, Muslims in these Islamic countries are unlikely to face religious persecution. The government says that Muslims cannot be treated as persecuted minorities in these Muslim majority countries. The BBC says that while these countries have provisions in their constitution guaranteeing non-Muslim rights, including the freedom of freedom to practice their religion, in practice, non-Muslim populations have experienced discrimination and persecution. Another aspect in the analysis of this act 
is the exclusion of other persecuted communities. The Citizenship Amendment Act does not include migrants from non-Muslim countries fleeing persecution to India. Rohingya Muslim refugees from Myanmar, Hindu refugees from Sri Lanka, and Buddhist refugees from Tibet, China. The Act also does not mention Tamil refugees from Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan Tamils were allowed to settle as refugees in Tamil Nadu in 1980s and 1990s due to systemic violence from the Sinhalese of Sri Lanka. They include 29,500 hill country Tamils, Malaya. The Act also does not provide relief to Tibetan Buddhist refugees who came to India in the 1950s and 1960s due to the Chinese invasion of Tibet. Their status has been of refugees over the decades. According to a 1992 UNHCR report, the then Indian government stated that they remain refugees and do not have the right to acquire Indian nationality. The act also does not address Rohingya Muslim refugees from Myanmar. The Indian government has been deporting Rohingya refugees to Myanmar. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast on the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019.